And here we go again. <laughs> Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Multiple Dimensions, Part 15, Formatting. In today's episode, two main things happened. We reviewed the compositional work that we have done to date, and then we made some new animations of our Improvisation 3. So far, we have three improvis improvisations derived from our scales or source scales we started out to work with these four scales we combined the pink ones and created three derivative scales we combined the blue ones and created three more derivative scales and then we took the two of the blue ones and then did improvisation three so we retraced the dna of where these works were coming from <laughs> In doing so, and looking at the animations that we created, we realized we're using MIDI Animator, Reaper Digital Audio Workstation, Vegas Editor, Nonlinear Video Editor. We were doing binaural recordings, and today we used the mixer in MuseScore to do uh, timbres and pan effects, left, right, center. And it seems like new work methods are being called for now that we are working with these multiple tools and these multiple fields, feed streams. So both our ideas and the realizations of these ideas are becoming more complex. The second key realization is it seems like there is more to explore and learn about the interaction between visual effects and aural effects and when you deliberately put them together. So in particular, we made three versions of our star field animation. And we, we started again with this improvisation three. And this is what the mono sounds like, piano. will direct your attention to the top center is white. This is called the ornament line of the program, which is uh, the glockenspiel ornament. And it is not playing at the moment. So that part is white. The left and the right fields are playing. Those are the backbone and the polyphone. And then the piano cadence is playing and it's at the bottom of this so when we start out, we do not see the top center of the star field colored. So now we hear it. It's the fast part. And it's coloring in this. So now the four star fields, and you can tell there's four because it's... It's got four repetitions. Here's four big dots, and here's four little clusters of four. And here you can see the left and the right are off, so they're white. And the bottom is very faint, so it's almost white. And then the top is very loud. So visually, you can hear the four parts that are playing in this score. And yet all of the sound is monophonic balance between the left and right ears and, you know, mid-brain, so to speak. So now we have a second thing to compare, and that is what if we use piano binaural animation? And then for this, we use the Reaper digital workstation, and we process the left what we process the backbone polyphone ornament to actually sound like they're on the left, right, bottom, and top. And <clears throat> same animation, here we go. So here's the ornament playing. It's all piano. And you can tell there's something different because it's not all in the center of our head. But 
it's a very subtle effect. And here they're dying off and they're faintly turning to white. And finally, finally, we use MuseScore itself and its built-in mixer, this thing, to crank things to the right and crank things to the left, the pan. And we also change the timbre to horns and glockenspiels. And so now, what does that look like with the same animation? And if we said, hey, watch the top center, which is now blue, and listen to the glockenspiel, your brain could probably begin to catch that, oh yeah, they're different parts. So this is what we mean when we say there's more to explore and learn about the interaction between the visual cues and the aural cues of a piece of music, in this case, that it literally does have four parts. So you can play the four parts so they're all in the middle of the, of the aural range, you know, monophonic, and still show four visual star fields. You can process the music so that it has, each part has a different uh, pan effect, including vertical. And then you can process the music so they have different parts playing, like horns versus glockenspiels. And with the same four Starfield animation, you get different effects. And at the moment, we can't decide if we like one better than the other, which is kind of interesting. So that was a key aha. So what we're going to do to bring things home for you is play the, the pan version here, which was new and done today. And then we will take us home. So that concludes today's stream. Our ideas for next time are to share the work we've done at Open Mic. Um, we're thinking about resuming working with our sound files with use of 3D objects, which means we have to go back and update our scripts, scripts so that they can piece together 10 second chunks. Uh, now that we've learned how to make stereo phone recordings, we did learn how to do that. We learned that, here's our test file for that. Talk into the top of the phone. This is the top of the phone. Now this is the bottom of the phone, the bottom of the phone. 
So that was the result of some good research on our part. And uh, some other ideas, many other ideas to, to, to work with. So thank you for your time, attention, curiosity, and interest. We look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Do come back. Do take care. And do keep on streaming.